Hello everybody, and it's Lee Bamber from The Game Creators presenting to you one of my many live broadcasts which covers Game Guru Max's internal development. Um, uh, most sincere apologies for last Wednesday when I didn't tell anybody that I was going on a short holiday. Didn't actually go anywhere, <laughs> but I certainly deserved a nice little rest after almost having no holidays all year, so I left it rather late. Um, so today I have some updates to show you, nothing visual um, in terms of new artwork, etc. But I have got some new things to show you in terms of the user interface and some lovely new panels to tantalise you with. Uh, but before I get into that, I just want to have a quick preamble along the lines of you are free to ask any questions you like. I'll answer them at the end of my little rant and any answers I don't get to Paul, uh, speak, I will put in a post on the Game Guru forum where you can see a recording of this live broadcast and also all my answers, all spell corrected and in some cases changing the question slightly, adding question marks and commas and capital letters or using the proper monikers for the uh, titles being discussed. Um, but that's just a courtesy detail that I like to provide when I post uh, on the Game Guru forums. So without further ado, I'm going to jump straight into showing you what I'd like to show you today, which is the weather and the environment effects and the advanced settings. And what does all that mean? Well, I'll show you right now. But before that, I just want to quickly peek to see if anybody can hear me. First person who preempted that question was Martin Lava. Uh, audio is fine, smiley face. Thanks very much for uh, just double checking that for me. So I'm just going to jump straight into... Game Guru Max latest internal version. You may notice something's different already. For example, what are those icons in the top right? <laughs> we have new icons and expect a lot more icons to come in the in the weeks and the months to come. Uh, but the one I can show you here, camera view, so it switches down to a nice camera view. And uh, the first one I'd like to introduce, oh, this one is Editor Light, just in case you're interested in knowing what that is. That basically adds an artificial light when you're editing, just so you can illuminate some of the objects that's nearest to you. Makes editing a little easier, especially if you're editing like dark levels or dungeons or things like that, where you do need some assistance, but you don't necessarily want that light in your final game. But the one I want to show you with today is this, our weather settings. As you can see, you've never seen this before. That's because it's been painstakingly designed and then approved and then coded. And then we're going to do some more iterations to make sure that it does everything that it needs to do. But right away, you can see it is pretty clear what it does. By default, we've got no weather. And then you can just click this icon and you instantly get rain. Or you click this icon and you instantly get snow. So we're going to make increasing use of um, images rather than lots of text and drop downs. Just so the interface is more intuitive, it's quicker to understand what things are without necessarily reading a lot of text. Uh, and underneath you see we've actually exposed some values that we think are important, um, not too advanced and everyone can kind of get the hang of. The most important one was weather intensity. So whether you want just a little bit of snow or a lot of snow, you can now control that on a slider. Then you have the fog range. It's not just a case of fog yes or no. It's like how much fog do you want? And uh, as you can see, I'm bringing the fog and near and far planes quite close to me so I can see the fog effect. And then of course you want to control how transparent or solid that fog happens to be and of course the fog colour. So we'll make a green fog, a sickly green fog. And this is another thing that we're starting to introduce. Um, we're categorising all our gadgets into gadget types um, and creating a gadget bible. And we're always going to stick to the same, if the thing you either want to do um, depends on a certain gadget, we'll use that gadget and that gadget will be the same wherever you encounter it. So once you understand how to use one gadget and you see that gadget again, you'll instantly know where to use it. So we're trying to keep the gadgets to as little as possible, but always intuitive. And this is a color bar. What you don't see on the right will be a little icon where you can see, it'll say, oh, you can edit. So you just click this bar and of course it brings up the color wheel so you can actually, well, color rectangle, so you can change the color. So anytime there's a situation where you're gonna ch change the color, you'll see it as a color bar. It also makes it nice and clean in the interface. And the exciting ones, the ones that you didn't know about, because I'm just releasing it to uh, this news today, is we're going to add lightning and thunder and wind. 
So as it's part of the weather thing, if you rank up lightning to, now you don't see it yet, this is not hooked up. There'll be some prompts which say, if you see an interface item in one of your future builds and it's not connected up to anything in the game, we'll prompt it, we'll pop it up there and say that that's not available yet. But you can, you can get the idea. Crank up the lightning and you get lots of lightning strikes going on. The more lightning, um, the more frequent it is. Thunder is the audio equivalent of that, so you might just want lightning or just thunder or both, which gets you crank thunder up. And then wind, which you don't see here, but we've actually got it in a revised design, is uh, the control of wind. So if there's anything that would be affected by wind, then it's in the weather panel that you'll actually find that. And some people might not actually need to see the weather all the time when they're editing the level and you can just switch that preview off so display weather in the editor can be toggled and uh, in case this is not familiar or maybe i haven't mentioned it enough times all of the major panels of the software will have a tutorial video so if you went to this panel and you think oh this is a lot of strange things what is it don't even need to understand it or read a news manual. Just press this play button and just watch a video off to get started on this panel. So it's not only just context sensitive help, which takes you to a document, it's context sensitive video tutorial, which actually shows you every single setting. And if that wasn't enough, you've then got step-by-step -step tutorial. So it'll actually do an interactive step-by-step -step where it walks you through using each of these things. So that's the weather one. I want to show you the environmental effects now. At the moment it's buried here, but we're moving it next to the weather where we think it belongs. It's a nicer place for it. So the environmental effects um, are things like sky and water uh, and, and other such things. But let me just give you what you'd see when you first run the software. Because what we wanted to do is have two modes. Um, a new user um, mode and then an advanced mode where we can put extra settings in that you might want as more of an advanced user but you don't necessarily need to know right away when you're creating your first couple of games. So this is what you get as a non-advanced user which allows you instead of a drop down you actually get little thumbnails of all the skies that you can choose from. Much easier and more intuitive than digging around dr drop down boxes. So you'll see more of these kind of ideas um, when it comes to the, the future designs that I'll be sharing in the weeks to come. The idea that you, you're going to use more illustrations to see what's going on. So you can pick a sky. The sun effect, we're changing this to a lighting moniker. But the idea, of course, is it's not necessarily changing the colour of the sun. It's changing the influence of the lighting on all your scene. That's the objects that you place in your scene, for example. Um, and the ground itself, and of course the intensity of that lighting effect. But this is something you might be excited about. We're rearranging it a little bit, but it's been asked, for, it's been requested for years, and we're taking the bull by the horns and adding it. It's basically time of day. So if you notice where the shadow is being cast there, if I went to midday, the shadow's being cast right down. If I went to morning, it's a longer shadow, and of course you can scroll through all of the, you can go to evening, then you go to dusk. And you can even go to night, where you won't get any shadow because the uh, sun's on the other side of the planet. Let's just set it back to afternoon, the long dark tea time of the soul. But even better than that is um, simulation of a 24-hour day-night cycle. So you can activate your day-night cycle and then decide what your game uh, clock is. Is it the same as real? Or are you going to make the game faster than the real-world time clock? And so it would basically use this as your starting point. So start in the morning and then start going through the time of day for that particular level. And so that's what this time of day section will be about, which is found conveniently under um, sky. Because the last thing I'd like to share with you is these are all fixed sky boxes. And we are going to be looking for new sky boxes, um, uh, preferably the uh, higher HD ones. So you can get a lot of HDR effects going on. But you can still simulate the sky. So this is the sky that you may have seen before. And of course you've got additional settings in order to control things like the zenith and the horizon colours, the cloud density, so you have more or less clouds, the cloud speed and height, things like that. So this is instead of a sky box where you can simulate the sky and these are all the settings for that. And uh, similarly, after we've set our sky and the feel and all the rest of it, we can then set our water. And this is the non-advanced one. We've kept it really simple. So water height, so just set a height. And then water speed. 
There's one thing you don't see here that we've decided to add, which is water direction. So the idea that the uh, water can move in any of the 360 compass directions, um, 360 degrees, I should say. And that way, if you've got a river snaking through your level, you can actually set the direction to actually follow that river's general course. And of course, the water color. So you can change the color to say, if you've got green fog, we may as well go for greenish turquoisey water. Um, and then the last one that um, a non-advanced user would see is filter effects, which is a super simple way of just changing. So you can go monochromatic, you can do some strange, um, basically all that is, it's just changing the filter. So almost like before it finishes the render, it passes it through this filter. So you can change any of the colors to something that's a little bit more um, suiting to your game theme. Uh, and then you can just switch it off if, if you don't need it. But the last thing I'd like to show you is we haven't just removed all the features and then run a mile. We, like I said, we're now in advanced mode. So the way you get at the advanced mode is you go into the Edia Global Settings and then there's a tab called Advanced. And in the Advanced, this is just what we have right now, but it will expand as we add more of the advanced options in other sections of the software is you can switch on and off which bits that you want to have the advanced settings for. You may not necessarily want to tick one box and suddenly everything becomes advanced. You may just not need, maybe you don't want to mess around with the shadows, you're happy with the defaults, or you're happy with the post-processing defaults, so you can leave them off. So if I just show you how it works, if I tick on this, which says additional settings for sky, you'll notice it's actually added uh, sun direction X, Y, and Z. So now we can actually control the sun's X, Y, and Z position in the sky uh, without, there you go, I'm just going to see, see if I can see the sun, um, like so. Now you can imagine if you was using the non-advanced mode, if you just set a time of day and then set your simulated day-night cycle, you wouldn't need to control sun direction X, Y, Z because it's been taken care of for you. But if you have a particular game or a particular sky map and you need the sun in a particular direction, casting a shadow in a particular direction, then you're going to need access to that. And that's why we put it in the advanced section. Similar with water, pretty simple, height, speed, color, and direction. But if you set the advanced settings on, then we give you all the extra ones, wave size, so we can have big waves, wind contribution, so, any wind that might have been set in the weather settings, how does that affect the water? Does it affect it at all, or does it affect it quite a lot, and choppiness and all the rest of it? And these last two enable entire components. So if post-processing gives you all of the post-processing settings, so the bloom, the screen reflections, the anti-aliasing, all the things that we will set defaults for you that we think are quite reasonable, but you may want access to them at some point, as an advanced user, and shadows, uh, which is controlling the size of the texture sizes. Again, we would set some reasonable defaults based on the minimum and recommended specs, but we do then open that up to let you get access to it. The last thing I just want to quickly mention, but I really won't show you it again in a future broadcast, is this third tap. We're changing it from ex uh, experimental to developer, and that's sort of like an advanced, advanced, advanced mode. That's where you're going to get stuff that is probably really only for people who are beta testing some future feature, but we're not ready to release it publicly, and we'll just bury things in there. And one of the specific things that we're going to put in the developer section are object properties. So if we just select this property, um, let's go into the entity properties for this crate. You see the advanced, which is currently called advanced. We're changing this to developer. The reason is we're going to pull out all the useful things and put them in the top where you're going to want them. But there's still a lot of stuff in here that you'll probably never, ever, ever, ever want to use. All the objects that we prepare as assets that you can have and drop into your level. We've already set these up for you. Things like a cluder and a cludee, who really wants that? But if you're a developer and you're creating your own assets, you might want that. So that's why I'm putting it in a developer section. So those are the things I wanted to show you today. We've got lots more designs um, that need to be turned into code. Some really exciting new things that you've never seen before. So I'm really looking forward to be able to demonstrate that. But we now have this process of going through a series of design iterations before it ever hits a line of code. That way, um, we don't have to second guess ourselves in the future. What we design is pretty solid. It does everything, not only for a new user, but for an existing and experienced user. 
um, and all hopefully it will appeal to more users when we release Game Guru Max uh, in the future. Now, as I promised, I'm going to answer a couple of questions. I've just been checking the clock. I've done quite well. I didn't think this would be a big list for this broadcast, but I seem to have managed to make weather, environmental effects, and advanced settings stretch out to 15 minutes. So, congratulations, me. But I will answer a couple of questions. Um, it is the tradition, but I probably won't get through all of them. So, I'll probably set a limit of maybe five minutes, and then the rest you'll find in the Game Guru forum thread once this recording goes onto YouTube. So, let me look for a question mark. And I found one. This is from uh, Make My TV. Will there be something like custom HUD editor or weapons creator? Yes and no. So basically what that means is on the first question, will there be a custom HUD editor? You will be able to create um, and edit things like your title screens, game screens, in-game screens, loading screens, game win and lose screens, about screens, additional instruction screens. Uh, screens in between levels, uh, video play sequences between levels, all those types of things you can create. If specifically you mean the game itself and where those panels are, like are your labs on your right or on your left, you have a radar up in the corner. I think with the thoroughness that we're doing this and uh, making sure that the design is right, I can't envisage a version of this software that didn't have some kind of HUD editing control. Otherwise, everyone's game will have exactly the same HUDs on it, and I don't think that will be acceptable for Max. So I'm pretty encouraged to say yes on that first one. But the second one, the weapon creator, uh, no. No, the weapon creator is really is the province of a technical artist who has an understanding of how weapons need to be configured and then settings set up so it actually is fully compatible with Game Guru Max. Um, we will be doing a guide and some templates to show you how to do that if you want to do it yourself. But there really is there's such an, a strong art slant to that. You really kind of need to be an artist, and so we'll just help artists produce those weapons. So it won't be inside the software, but we'll help you bring your weapons into Game Guru Max if you want to follow the probably quite advanced step by step in order to do it. It's not just a case of grabbing a weapon off a store, dropping it in, and suddenly it'll work. Just look at the um, Enhanced Weapons Pack for Game Guru Classic. I mean, those weapons are absolutely awesome. And <laughs> they took a long time to create. A long time to create. So there's a lot of work goes into a good weapon. Um, question, any updates on decals? Um, we will probably still have some decals in there, but we are moving on to particles. Particles are the rich man's decals. <laughs> so uh, once you start seeing what we're going to do with the particles, we've, we've actually been discussing it uh, today, in fact. And uh, I think when you see what we've got in, in stuff, particles, you won't really want to worry about decals. But certainly quads with textures on them, you could do that, of course, if that's what you you really want the decals for. Here's another question. Uh, it's another one from uh, Make My TV. Will there be something like custom HUDs? Oh, you've just posted it twice. Thank you for that. Right, next question. Nope, nope, that's another question. That's another question. That is all this. Nope. Here's a question. Will the skybox be animated? No. Um, skyboxes and sky spheres, by tradition, are static images that wrap around the world and pretty much stay as they are. If you want animated skies, simulate. You take the simulate sky and then you can control the attributes of a realistic sky, so the clouds and the colours and the horizons and where the sun is and things like that. So that's what you'll you'll use if you want animated skies. But skyboxes traditionally are static. I'm sure there are hybrids, but we're not looking at that at this stage. We're just going for the skybox option. So if you want your own skybox, you can have it. Or we simulate the sky for you, which obviously is animated and looks much nicer in certain situations. So here's a question. Here's a big question. This is from 3Com. Um, uh, GG Max does not handle multi GG Max. Oh, what was all that? Does not handle multi GG Max. Picks a texture randomly and paints the object with that texture, ignoring the other two textures. The question is, will this bug be for, will this bug be fixed next release? Um, don't worry too much about bugs. Yes, we have got a list now of all the bugs that have been reported, and we're going to create a separate system in order to rattle through those bugs. The aim is to make sure that when we do a release there is a very minimal number of bugs in it. So it's either a feature that we're ready to share with you 
that has no bugs in it, or we're not sharing the feature. If there's a feature that we've got internally that's full of bugs, we're not gonna give it to you. We're gonna try and get a feature to a point where when you use it, it does what it says on the tin. That's basically the goal. So it's never gonna be a case of we have no bugs in our software, there's no such thing. Um, but we are gonna be very conscious of the fact of setting a, a, a very almost zero tolerance on allowing bugs through into the builds. But as for that particular bug, not a clue. We are prioritizing into batches all the bugs that have currently been reported. Um, so it might fit into one of the higher ones, but I'm not familiar with that bug off the top of my head. Here's a question from Martin Oliver. Uh, classic entities that were exported with coordinates half above ground and half below ground would keep those coordinates max as broken. Can there be a way to have that back or overwritten by default? We're, we're doing some radical things with the um, addition and manipulation of objects in your level we may already have solved that we may already have solved that situation so watch this space a future broadcast will show that code in action maybe you like it maybe you'll hate it but don't worry about the way it currently works we've really gone to tone on um, object manipulation uh, for game guru max uh, here's another one from 3com uh, uh, GG Max creates its own surface map ignoring my own service map do you think to change this behavior Sure, um, I, it shouldn't overwrite, but if it does, I apologize, that's a bug. Um, but if you've already provided an underscore surface dot, whatever it is, DDS or PNG, the software should not, under any circumstances, overwrite that. That's your precious surface that it's took a long time to create. It shouldn't be creating an overwriting, the one that you've provided. It only creates the underscore surface texture if there isn't already one there, because you do need that for our new uh, graphics engine rendering system. So if it is overwriting your surfaces, <laughs> textures, I hope you've made backups. Um, okay, looking for another question. I'll probably do two more questions and then just looking at the clock, we want to keep this nice and punchy. Um, just looking for the question marks, really. Here's guys, a question. We've had a question from you, we've had a question from you. Let's, let's have a question from someone who hasn't already asked a question. Is there anyone? Yeah, there is one there, but I will answer that one. Uh, because there is uh, there isn't anybody else who's asking a unique question. This is from oh that was a question too. Yeah, I'll do one from Martin Oliver. Um, has there been any beta three bug fixes? Has there been some? There has been some complaints that TDC hasn't fixed any bugs and only focused on the UI. Would we've helped to clear things up. Um, not many bugs have been fixed. All of the work has been on the UI and the design. Um, the reason is there's no point fixing a bug on an internal function or feature if then we completely change the design so that function, function doesn't work like that anymore and it works a different way or another system comes in and does what that used to do. So you've just wasted your time fixing that bug. So don't expect a huge flurry of fixes and we stop working on the UI. And we are going to continue to work on the UI until everything is done, until we have a complete design for Game Guru Max. But we're not ignoring bugs, it's just it's going to run on a separate track. Uh, and we're going to create some uh, batches based on the priority of those bugs. But the only bugs that we actually action are the ones that relate to the designs we've approved and coded and we're happy with. So that's the, the order in which we're going to tackle bugs. And the last question, it was the one at the bottom from a new user who's posted his question here for the first time, on this chat at least, from Martin Xman. The question is, is there any reason why the bugs have to be reported on the forum instead of Git? I think it would be easier for you guys to follow the progress on users also. Um, you can actually report your bugs on Git, and as soon as I've sorted out a good procedure, hopefully find some helpful bod to help me on the management side of the bug reporting things, I will be encouraging people to use our GitHub issues board. There is a a label that you can assign called max it's in purple when you're on the issues board to indicate that your bug is a max bug and I agree that is the place to report them that's the place to talk about them to post evidence and files that help us reproduce that bug that will then be taken to our internal system which then queues up what kind of priority it is who gets to fix it etc and then there's an internal process where we confirm independently that that bug has indeed been fixed and then we go back to github and mark that as fixed so when you see that the bug that you've reported you should get a notification from github and then you can go into the latest build because we'll only confirm it as fixed 
if it's available to you so you can test it and then you can satisfy yourself that that bug was indeed fixed. So that's the procedure I am going to set up for that. But right now, it has been a bit of a free-for-all with people finding a bug and just posting it pretty much anywhere on the forums. And that's okay, that's fine. We, we've, we've had to scrape through all the forums to find all these bugs and then put them on our internal system. But at some point, we're going to move all those list items onto our issues board. Yes, that's right, we're going to be adding to our own issues board. But it's then a consistent way in which we can just see how many bugs there are, how many are left to fix, uh, how many need more information before we can reproduce things like that. So you're absolutely right, it needs to be on Git. Um, I'm just scrolling through, and that is the last question I want to answer this time. The rest of the answers you'll find on the Game Guru forums. So go and check that out. It should be there in about an hour, or maybe an hour and a half. Um, I actually have a call in half an hour, um, which relates to Game Guru Max. Some technology that we want to include in Game Guru Max, and it's going to be an exciting inclusion. I think you will approve, but I'm not going to say any more. I'm just going to leave you with that very, very vague teaser. So thanks for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it. Schedule has now resumed. So next Wednesday, 4 p.m. GMT, you will get another little dose of Game Guru Max uh, internal development. I've also posted on the forums my schedule for the rest of 2020, which Wednesdays I will be blabbering on and which Wednesdays I won't. And you'll probably notice a little bit of a gap towards the end uh, of December as I disappear off to enjoy the festivities. But I'll resume again bright and early on the first Wednesday of 2021. So until then, thanks very much for your kind attention and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.